Melissa, uh, City Clerk, if you can let me know when we're ready. We are ready. And uh, City Manager, are you ready? Recording in progress. Sorry. No, no problem. Okay, uh, good evening. I'd like to call the San Bruno City Council special meeting of May the 8th. Uh, May, hello. June, uh, <laughs> June the 8th, 2021, 5 o'clock to order. Roll call, please. Council Member Hamilton? Here. Council Member Mason? Um, she was here a moment ago, so I think she might be having some trouble. Council Member Medina is coming in the room now. Council Member Salazar? Here. Vice Mayor Marty Medina? Here. Mayor Rico Medina? Here. Thank you. Um, now we'll move on to item number three. Public comments for items not on the agenda. Tonight is a study session. <clears throat> in to regard to the design of the Recreation and Aquatic Center. So if anyone in the public has something they'd like to speak on, uh, other than that, now would be the time to please raise your hand and we would go ahead and call upon you. <clears throat> okay, seeing no hands at this time, we will <clears throat> we'll move on to the study session item and I would uh, ask if the city clerk could uh, call that item to the public's attention. <laughs> yes, item 4A, adopt a resolution approving the design of the Recreation and Aquatic Center, authorizing the city manager to execute a construction contract with Lathrop Construction Inc. for the project in an amount not to exceed $43,031,000, approving a construction contingency of $4,687,046, Authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Nino and Moore Inc. to provide geotechnical engineering and materials testing and inspection professional services for the project in an amount not to exceed $396,262 and approving a total project budget in the amount of $59,980,228. Thank you very much, City Clerk. Appreciate it. And uh, now I'd like to turn it over to our city manager. Good afternoon, members of the city council and members of the public. Javon Grogan, city manager. Uh, it is my pleasure to be with us, uh, with you this evening and to present this item, uh, support the discussions and support the city council through the recommended actions tonight. I am joined here uh, by Don Merkels, the architect for the project, and Ann Matola, the community services director, uh, who will oversee uh, this beautiful facility once it's constructed. We also have representatives from the construction management firm that will be assisting uh, with the construction of this building. Uh, and so we, we come here tonight uh, as the council and the, the public knows, uh, after a, a long process that really began in 2013, where this city council created the San Bruno Community Foundation to manage $70 million of restitution settlement from pg e following the gas pipeline explosion that occurred in the Crestmore neighborhood in 2010. In 2015, uh, 2015, uh, six years ago, the foundation launched a community listening campaign around the use of the $70 million uh, that was allocated uh, to the foundation. And we, we know in 2015, uh, that process started, it was concluded in 2016. And in 2017, we started conceptual design on the facility that is uh, before you for action tonight. And so as a reminder, the actions that are before the city council are uh, adopting a resolution to approve the design of the aquatic and recreation facility project, authorizing the city manager to execute a construction contract with later construction for just over $43 million, also authorizing uh, Nino and Moore to, con to conduct geotechnical testing and inspection services related to the project and approving a project contingency for construction of 4.6. Uh, and that, that brings us to a total project total of $59.9 million, just under $60 million. And, and we'll talk 
uh, about, frankly, all aspects of the, of the project in a little bit. So our agenda for tonight are, are really five items. Uh, we'll talk about the process and uh, have a project overview. We'll give an update on permitting. Uh, we will then talk about the awarding of the bid, uh, next steps, project schedule, and then finally, the city council action. It's worth noting that uh, we're, we will talk about the process for the construction uh, document phase and the phase for permitting uh, and, 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 and bidding that we've been in. But the city council and the public uh, will remember there, there were three phases that preceded that. Uh, there was conceptual documents, uh, a conceptual design of the facility, then there was schematic design, design development, and then construction documents. And so a little bit of the process overview for this construction document phase. Uh, it began in February of 2020. Uh, there were four uh, primary categories of uh, meetings and uh, boards and commissions that uh, we interface with. The first one was the advisory committee uh, that was made up of eight to 10 city staffers and consultants, two members of the city council, uh, Mayor Rico Medina, um, council member uh, Laura Davis, uh, and after she uh, left the council, uh, she was replaced by council member Michael Salazar, two members of the planning commission, two members of the park and recreation commission, and two members of the, of the foundation, uh, uh, the community foundation board. Also attending many of these meetings was Leslie Hadamia, the executive director of the San Bruno Community Foundation. We provided periodic updates to the city council, the planning commission, the park and rec commission, and the community foundation. There were a whole host of internal steering committee meetings and technical meetings uh, that uh, involved fire department, police department, park and recreation department, public works department, building maintenance, IT, um, uh, and, and then our, our, uh, our, our building construction division. And so on the screen before you is a list of sort of all of the advisory committee meetings, the city council updates, the, the park and rec commission updates, uh, and the community foundation updates that took place during this construction phase uh, was not listed as the, uh, the host of other internal steering committee dates and technical advisory uh, committee meetings. So the aerial that you have before you is today. This is what our recreation and aquatic center uh, uh, that is in the middle of our city park uh, looks like. There's the existing recreation facility with the rotary pavilion in between uh, the, rec the recreation building and the uh, San Bruno pool. This is the future, this is tomorrow. This is our new aquatic and recreation facility and the reconfigured city parkway uh, with additional parking, uh, a relocated pavilion, an indoor and an outdoor pool, uh, and a host of other elements that we will uh, talk about. And so now if uh, Don Merkels is our architect is in the room, Melissa, uh, I'll turn the presentation over to her that will take the city council through a number of uh, activities and programs that are uh, that are within the building, uh, some some images that will help orientate you to uh, the building that you are approving for uh, construction tonight. So, Don. All right. Thank you, Javon. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, Don Merkis, uh, Group 4, Principal, and super thrilled to be here tonight with you. Um, it's been a long road, but a road well worth it. Um, just to give you a quick overview of the project, these are the two floor plans. First floor is on the top, and I'll start up at the very top of the gymnasium. We have a full high school size gymnasium that's divisible to two cross courts. John, can I interrupt you? I think you're, we're getting a little feedback from your microphone. Okay. Um, let's see. Is that any better? No, it's the same. Same. Okay. Um, let's see. I can call in or I can set up another microphone in just one minute. So sorry. Um, while we're waiting, Mayor Medina, look, I don't know if it's just on mine, but it looks like someone's raising their hand. Yes, and we're going to let staff have their presentation as norm. 
and then we'll go to the public. We already have done public comment. Your item is not on the agenda. Thank you. Test. There you go. All right. Is that sound better? Excellent. All right. I see smiling faces. Great. <laughs> um, continuing around from the gymnasium, we have three classrooms on the first floor that's supplemented by a conference room up on the second floor, which is then directly adjacent to a community hall. The community hall is the largest gathering space in the facility. It's divisible and is also adjacent to a catering kitchen. As we move over to the areas designated in green, um, we have an elevated walking track that goes around the top of the gym. We also have a group exercise room um, for things like boot camps, yoga classes, line dancing, all sorts of things. And then the larger space up on the top left in green is our fitness area where we have cardio and weights. Um, continuing back to the first floor in blue on the left side, we have their year round aquatics with the natatorium that's supported by locker rooms as well as party rooms. And so we'll take you through the base project on the next slide. So this is a view of the center as you're coming in on City Parkway and looking at the second floor here with the transparency into the community hall. That is the large space with the catering kitchen. We have three classrooms on the first floor below that. Moving up City Parkway, we have the entry trellis, which goes into this two-story lobby space. Then behind that, on the second floor, we have the group exercise room, all fronted by the public plaza. As you move up the park beyond that to the natatorium wing, there's stadium seating and steps that take you up as the grade changes and you move into the park. On the next slide, we're moving around, so we're looking back towards Crystal Spring with the building in front of us. It's almost the exact same location as the existing building. The creek is now behind us, and you can see the community hall and classroom wing, the lobby that has a two-story volume with the stair and an elevator that connects up to the second floor. We have the entry trellis that pulls people into the lobby. And behind that, you can see the clear story windows, which provide daylighting into the gymnasium. The group exercise room is still on the second floor. And as look, you look beyond to the left on this rendering, you can see the natatorium and the outdoor grass area adjacent to that. On the next slide, we're up on the elevated grass area that's enclosed outside the natatorium and the natatorium is inside the two-story space. It has a large door that opens up to allow indoor-outdoor connections. Then we have two party rooms directly adjacent to that that connect both to the indoors and the outdoors for revenue generation, for lifeguard training, things like that. And then also similar that you saw in the gymnasiums, we also have a shed roof that raises up and allows the clear stories to provide natural lighting into the natatorium. As we go to the next slide, uh, looking at the lobby space now, we have two images. The one on the left is as you enter to the lobby and look to the right, the two-story um, space has the stair that takes you up to the community hall or directly in front of you as the classrooms. And then to the left of you here, you can see the transparency that connects the lobby to the gymnasium. And then if we were to turn 180 degrees and look in the other direction, the image on the right shows us looking back at the reception desk. We can still see the gymnasium on the right. Two-story volume looks up and connects you to the group exercise room on the second floor. And if we look down the hallway, we can actually see the pool lobby beyond. And on the next slide, we've gone up a half a level. 
and we're at the pool lobby and you can see the stair that would then take you up to the fitness room, the group X room, and the elevated walking running track that goes around the gymnasium and also has the connection to the pool here. This is, provides you access at this lobby level to the locker rooms as well as family changing rooms. The image on the right shows you an indoor view of the natatorium with the view to in the far corner there is the doors that connect to the outdoor space and then the two party rooms are on the left. What you can't see in this image is the glazed wall that's up on the back side of us here on this left side and connects to the fitness room on the second floor which I'll show you an image in just a minute. On the next slide We've now gone into the gym. We're looking back towards the lobby. You can see the transparency that I was talking about with the glazing that connects us to the lobby, provides access indoors and out to the lobby from the gym. You can see the elevated walking track that goes around the perimeter. If you look into the middle of the gym, there is a curtain that comes down and divides the court into two half courts, two cross courts. And you can also see the transparency into the Group X room that's directly in front of us, the fitness room over to the right, past the track that actually has then transparency into the natatorium as well. There is bleachers that support the full court or the half court that you can see here on the right as well. And the next slide. So now we're up on the second floor in the fitness room. Looking down into the natatorium, you can see how we borrowed daylight from both the gymnasium as well as the natatorium and provided great views while working out from this space. The pool lobby is over on your left. And then on the next slide, this is an image of the group exercise room that's on the second floor, has views out towards the park over that public plaza, as well as back down into the entry lobby. And then on the next slide, the community hall. Uh, this space is also divisible and the view on the left is looking back towards the park. As we came in, I pointed out those corner windows. This is the community hall that is located there. It is uh, sized for nice size events, seating from 250 to 300 and then more for assembly. It's directly adjacent to a catering kitchen as well as for pre-function use. There is a conference room directly across the hall. Next slide. Um, so now those were all things that were in the base project. So I'm going to walk you through all of the items that were also bid alternates and are, um, I'll review those one at a time. We've got a summary slide here for you, but since I'm going through them, um, probably more efficient if we just go through them on the following slides. And we're going to start with add alternate number one, which is the outdoor pool and deck. And so when we're looking at the image in the base uh, project, there was an outdoor uh, lawn area that supported the indoor natatorium and the party rooms. In this option, in this alternate, we've added uh, another six lane for an outdoor pool, which complements the indoor six lane pool. So the full facility would have 12 lanes as well as a splash pad that has zero entry. You can see how it kind of has an infinity edge to the pool. It's tucked into the hillside, so it really has kind of a low profile from the park side, but really creates this lovely vista from the pool side. And then the cross section that is at the top shows you how the pool um, comes and is slightly elevated. Um, as we go down from the pool, we have the stadium seating that takes you down. We have the existing redwood tree that we're saving that's at the pool lobby entry down to the public plaza where there's an existing oak tree that we're also saving as part of the project to the entry trellis and the entry plaza there on the far right of that section. On the next slide, 
Another of the alternates is the backup generator and its enclosure. It's located at the utility end of the parking lot, kind of right here up in the corner where we have our trash enclosure, kind of at the back side of the building tucked up into the hill here. It actually has a portion of it as a retaining wall. Um, in addition to the enclosure uh, that's provided for sound attenuation, weather protection is the emergency generator. The emergency generator, uh, the building already has one and it would just provide a nice um, backup opportunity if PG&E, if the power is outage, allow the facility used for ancillary uses in case of emergency other than just uh, when there's power available. Next slide. Uh, the topping slab, so this is actually a plan of the building. Uh, the darkest square in the middle is our gymnasium, and then you can see the pool, the natatorium on the left. The area that's covered here in pink is the topping slab, which is an add alternate. Um, we have sealed stained concrete as our floor material in these high traffic areas, uh, and it is with structural elements uh, that are part of that, like columns and brace frames. And so by having a topping slab over the top of it, we make it be a little bit more easily maintained, uh, more consistent service, aesthetically a little bit nicer and a little bit better wearing surface. So as we look at the next alternate, um, this alternate is located in the natatorium and we have three brace frames in the natatorium and that's the image that we have on the left. And what we'd be doing with this alternate is accepted is add additional wood treatment at these brace frames, similar to the treatment that we're using in the lobby as well as the community hall. And I took a snippet and you can see that rendering um, in the middle of the brace frame in the community hall and how the wood treatment just provides a screen in front of that. It also provides opportunity um, for a little bit more sound attenuation as well. On the next slide is two alternates. So this is alternate number six, which is the extension of the glazing at the entry trellis and alternate number seven, which is a soffit at the balcony that's on the community hall. Uh, both of these alternates are really about weather protection and envelope enclosure. So in the base bid for the glazing at the entry trellis, now this is the horizontal glazing that's uh, part of the trellis to protect people as they're coming in and out of the building from raindrops or the foggy mist. Um, we have about five feet. That's part of the base project that's shown there in white. But the addition, the thought is to give a little bit more of a walk-off area, a little bit more weather protection for people waiting for rides or people just congregating outside the door. Um, and so it's an additional 10 feet of glazing to provide weather protection at the entry. And then the soffit at the balcony is really more about envelope enclosure, weatherability, and ease of maintenance. And so this is uh, enclosing the bottom of the balcony with the finished soffit material. And then the next alternate is exterior sunshades. And so looking at providing additional uh, sun protection, heat gain, energy efficiency to the building, uh, we've looked at the northeast and the southeast elevations to provide uh, exterior sunshades. And the elevations of the building um, are shown here, both on the top elevation and the elevation on the left. And then I've kind of circled the areas that these sunshades would be applied if this alternate is accepted um, on the rendering perspective that you see here on the bottom right. And then the next alternate. So the next alternate is additional creek restoration. Um, with the realignment of City Parkway and with the permitting requirements from the Regional Water Quality Control Board and the Corps of Engineers, uh, a good portion, what's called segment A, of that creek realignment is being restored uh, to naturalized uh, creek bed. Um, in addition, the thought is since we're improving this area, um, 
what would the cost be at this time to go ahead and improve that additional area that we're calling Creek Segment B. And so this alternate would extend the restoration of the creek to this additional area as indicated by these arrows here on the diagram. And then I believe that's the last of our alternates. And then the other thing on your agenda tonight for approval is for geotechnical material testing inspection services. And so uh, these services, an RFP was issued in January, uh, five proposals received in March, and based on the evaluation by the city, the recommendation is to award that to uh, Nino and, what's her last name? <laughs> yeah. um, I believe it's Nino, um, and it's really work that's done during construction. So when the geotech's out there stabilizing the site, they do testing to confirm it's done. As steel is construct, or as steel is constructed, testing is also done, as well as concrete testing. And so that's an ongoing service that happens throughout construction. And it's Nino and more. Sorry about that. And I think that concludes my portion of the presentation. And I think I get to hand that over to uh, Park and Rec Director Ann Otola. Good evening. So I have a permitting update and really um, we are in the home stretch of obtaining our permits to proceed with the work on this project. I could have the next slide please. So as you all know, the city's been working with the Army Corps of Engineers on our NEPA clearance as they have jurisdiction over the creek as it constitutes waters of the U.S. The core scope of review includes the entire project, not just the creek location. And since the project includes demolition of a historic structure that's eligible for the National Register of Historic Places, and since the site is also located near documented archaeological sites, this process also included a Section 106 consultation. The Section 106 consultation um, involves the State Historic Preservation Office, or SHPO, and they've required a submittal of a Historic American Building Survey, or HABS report, that provides how the historic facility will be documented before it's demolished. An archeological monitoring plan is also required by both the Corps, the Corps and SHPO due to the, sense, the archeological sensitivity of the area. And this process also required a tribal consultation to discuss the treatment of those archeological areas. So as I mentioned, we're at the end of the consulta consultation. We have everything um, in agreement in a memorandum of agreement that is being circulated right now to SHPO and to our tribal representative from the Moonson Band of Costanoa Indians. And we expect this process to be finalized um, in the middle of July. Next, please. And so secondly, um, as you know, there's an add-on for um, adding an additional 230 feet to the restoration of the creek, and we have that as a bid alternate. So the city is currently working with both the Regional Water Quality Control Board and the California Department of Fish and Wildlife to be prepared to update those two permits that we've already obtained um, in the event that we have those um, bid alternates approved this evening as part of the contract. So. Um, I think the good news about this is we had um, permit processes with both these agencies, and so all this would take is an administrative process, um, which we could actually finalize by the end of the month. And so that is our update on permits. Thank you, Director McCullough. Okay, uh, and I'll take us through the remaining sections of our presentation tonight. Uh, and we'll, I'll begin with section three on the bid award. So uh, we received six uh, uh, construction bids, total price ranging from uh, just over 40 million to just over 46 million. Uh, unfortunately, uh, in the final uh, due diligence and uh, review of all of the bids, the two lowest bidders, uh, their bid was determined to be, to not meet all of the pre-qualification um, conditions. Uh, thus they could not be considered and so uh, we are tonight recommending to award the contract to the, the third lowest bidder later of construction so the city is recommending that all of the ad alternates be included uh, in the contract award given the favorable bid cost uh, and we have a slide on that in a minute 
So the total base bid is $39.9 million. It's worth noting that uh, one of the uh, city council's uh, criteria for this building, uh, when we uh, completed the schematic design and we're uh, going into uh, design development, was include the community room. Uh, it was a highly um, uh, uh, articulated benefit uh, or attribute to the building uh, during the listening campaign. Uh, and that was initially uh, not included in that first draft and the city council said include that. And so that is a part of the base bid for 39.9 uh, million, as well as all the other uh, aspects that we went over tonight. And then there are the uh, eight alternatives that uh, our architect, uh, Don Merkels went through. Uh, I, our, at alternate five was deleted. It was an exterior wood treatment that was determined uh, not to be needed. Uh, but all of the other eight alternatives that uh, uh, Don went through, we are recommending to be included for a total construction bid award to late construction for uh, $43,031,000. Uh, total project budget is just under $60 million, $59.9 million. Uh, that includes uh, first and foremost, First, first and foremost, the $50 million grant from the San Bruno Community Foundation. And the slide above uh, has all of the various elements. Uh, construction uh, and construction contingency is one component, but there's all the other various components of, of building a building of this magnitude. And so there's our design and engineering costs of 6.4 million, environmental of, of, 60, uh, of 82 million, construction management, from Griffin Structures, who has been along this journey with us for uh, just over a year now, uh, of 1.2 million. Geotechnical uh, uh, waterproofing and commissioning services of uh, just under 500,000. Uh, construction again at 43 million. A construction contingency of 4.6 million. There are total contingencies that are just over $5 million. Uh, that's shown on, on the subsequent slide. Uh, Laura Field parking lot project, the city council will remember that we advanced this, this project uh, because there is a separation, um, the, the, a geographical separation in the park on where this project would occur. Uh, it is occurring near Tom Laura Fields to add additional parking uh, and reconfiguring um, uh, that, that parking area adjacent to Tom Laura Field, but will also serve this new building. The city council has already awarded that contract, but that is $1.1 million captured in the totality for this project. Traffic signal and city net fiber, uh, fiber installation of 850,000. The vast majority of that, about 750,000, is for a traffic, potentially a traffic signal at Oak and Crystal Springs. It's worth noting, um, and I, uh, I know we've talked about this in our prior meetings, but when the traffic analysis was done at Oak and, Oak and Crystal, uh, the traffic count warrant actually meets a signalized intersection during the AM peak now. Uh, this project makes that worse, and so uh, we are including a uh, traffic, uh, the cost of a traffic signal in the project. It is possible that there may be some other treatment short of a traffic signal. Uh, a, uh, a traffic circle has been talked about, and that will be studied, uh, but we are including the total cost uh, in case we have to go with a traffic signal at that intersection. Uh, temporary space for our recreation department, a part of the overall project budget at seven at 375,000. Uh, the council and the community knows that we have already exited uh, the recreation facility as well as the pool facility and are in those temporary locations. FFNE, fixtures, furnitures, and equipment of uh, just over $1 million, electronic systems, 25,000. Utility company connections and other services of uh, 130,000, and then other fees and administrative and the business plan cost of $373,000. Brings us to the total of 59.9 million total project, including contingencies. Uh, it's worth uh, pointing out that the total project estimate uh, just before going out to bid for this project was 67.4 million dollars. Uh, we did have a, uh, a really good bidding environment having six proposals uh, and uh, timing uh, for going out to bid did leverage uh, a very good bidding environment. And so the total project cost 
is $7.4 million less than the last time we were before you. Uh, and so that brings us to that uh, $59.9 mil, uh, million. And so uh, I know that uh, when, when our bids came in, uh, we were uh, excited about that. So how, how do we propose to fund the project? Uh, what is before you uh, is very similar to what you saw uh, in September uh, and in prior um, discussions around the potential budget for the facility. The, the most significant change is there's $7.5 million out of this out of this budget, and we were talking about the need uh, to seek debt uh, to pay over time for that additional seven to eight million dollars that we were projecting. Uh, with the current budget, there's no longer the need to do that. So the total project cost, again, the base project plus the add alternates is 59.9 million. There's an additional add alternate for solar that has not uh, yet been bid of an estimated cost of $1.3 million. Currently, we have not identified funds to install the photovoltaic panels on top of the roof. Uh, however, all of the conduit and systems to, to install solar uh, at a later date is included in the base project. Uh, and depending on how much solar uh, we decide eventually to put in, we may put in solar panels in some of the parking lots to generate additional uh, capacity to offset the, the energy costs of the building. Uh, we will continue to see uh, grant funds and other funding opportunities. There are uh, government loans for solar. There are entities that will provide upfront costs for solar and you pay it over time on your energy savings. And so we, we will continue to identify a path for solar with the goal of um, uh, adding it to the project, hopefully before construction is complete. Uh, with regard to funding sources, uh, they are listed there. I will go through them. Uh, $50 million uh, grant from the San Bruno Community Foundation. We will be before the foundation a week from today on June 15th uh, for the final award of that grant. Park and Lou Fund, so the City Council will remember our initial budget uh, called for using the entire balance of our Park and Lou Fund at $3.1 million. Uh, this is now down to 1.7 uh, in alignment with direct prior direction from the city council to retain funds so we can do other uh, important projects across the city. And so that is leaving a balance of 1.4 in our park and lieu fund. Uh, including uh, the next item is $4.5 million in a community benefit payment that we have already received from YouTube, uh, the city council and members of the public will remember that we were able to negotiate a community benefit payment uh, for YouTube's project that is currently under construction uh, for two office towers uh, and a, a subterranean uh, uh, parking structure at 1400 and 1450 Bay Hill. Those are those three cranes uh, that are up right now uh, building that facility. Uh, and that uh, $4.5 million payment was paid in, I believe, February of this year. Uh, but we do have those funds. Uh, the next uh, two line items are additional uh, pg e settlement funds uh, in, in two various uh, categories. One of them is the settlement from ex parte disclosures. Uh, the city entered into a settlement with the city of San Carlos um, uh, for ex parte disclosures that were uh, found to have occurred between pg e uh, and the uh, San Francisco Public Utilities Commission. Uh, our portion of that settlement was $1 million and those are funds that have already been received. Uh, the next line item is 900000 for residual funds from the Crestmore Neighborhood Rebuild Project. When we uh, closed out that project uh, nearly a year ago, there was a, a $900,000 left in that uh, project budget, and we are uh, recommending to apply those to this project. Uh, the, the next two items are water fund and our sewer fund, uh, uh, just under 600000 for water and just uh, under 500000 for sewer. So 594,000 and 476,000 respectively. Uh, this is to replace the water and sewer lines that are currently within City Parkway. Uh, because we are reconfiguring City Parkway as a part of this project, uh, we are advancing a project that we would have ordinarily done to replace the water and sewer pipelines under that road. And so those are appropriately recommended to come from the water and sewer fund. There's gas tax um, uh, in, uh, in, in Measure A funding of 750000 This is for the traffic signal that is uh, recommended for Oak and Crystal Springs. Again, a funding source that we would ordinarily use 
uh, for that type of improvement and again uh, meets the warrants for additional uh, traffic mitigation measures based on uh, the, the today number. I, I will say that that was that traffic study was done pre COVID-19 uh, and it was AM peak when all of the, the school traffic um, uh, was around, which we know will, will come back. Uh, and the last item in the project budget is uh, $50,000 for the city art fund. And the city council will remember you approved that uh, funding already for relocation of our uh, memorial art structure. In total in the budget, there's over $5 million of contingencies and various line items. Uh, and so when you uh, take out the San Bruno Community Foundation grant, the, the funds, the city funds that we are using um, is $10 million and $5 million of that is contingency. Uh, and so uh, the, the total uh, project of $59 million is roughly $55 million in uh, hard costs uh, with additional contingency. Uh, and again, $1.9 million of that is coming from uh, residual PGE funds and settlement funds, and 4.5 of that 10 million is coming from the YouTube community benefit. Next is our next steps and project schedule. So uh, over these next two weeks, uh, we do have a number of meetings. Uh, we met with the uh, Recreation and Aquatic Center Advisory Committee last night. Uh, we were meeting here tonight uh, with the city council. Uh, on Tuesday, we are at the San Bruno Community Foundation, uh, and on June 16th, we are at the Park and Recreation Commission, uh, and then uh, really we'll move forward uh, to enter into contract um, and uh, uh, finalize all the contracting documents and insurance uh, in, during the month of July uh, when we receive the permits. And then issue, we anticipate issuing the notice to proceed and have a groundbreaking ceremony in August. So we are, we are very close in this long journey uh, to bring this amazing facility to the community. Uh, with an estimated completion in early 2023. 20, uh, and that concludes our pre, uh, actually no, there is one more slide. So construction management, I know that this is important for the city council. Um, and a, a reason why we brought on our construction manager so they can be with us as we were developing the construction document so they could really envision and know the project that we were designing uh, and not just coming on board and reading plans uh, and then uh, inspecting and, and managing the project based on those plans. And so uh, the task items for Griffin structures are uh, on the screen and you have them as cost and budget management, schedule management, document management, submittals, uh, financial controls, change order management, review and approval of all of those change orders that will have to come to the city council. Uh, communication uh, to site neighbors and stakeholders, and there will be a process uh, for uh, individuals in the community and the city council to contract, to contact our project manager if there are any concerns with, with regard to construction, uh, both weekly and monthly reports, uh, owner architect and contractor, weekly meetings, uh, OAC is, is the industry term, uh, and special contractor and consultant meetings to make sure that everything stays on track. Progress reports to uh, key stakeholders, including the city council, a uh, coordination with our geotechnical testing and inspection services, review of the progress uh, payment uh, and, and pay applications uh, uh, for, for all of the uh, various uh, labor unions that will be uh, working on the site, uh, lien releases, quality control and uh, quality assurance services, claim mitigation, uh, and avoidance, commissioning, startup, testing of equipment, uh, training, uh, OM manuals, warranties, all that stuff that we're going to need uh, in, in perpetuity, and, and then the closeout and punch list. And so uh, Griffin Structures uh, uh, is here tonight and able to answer any questions that the city council may have. And lastly, the action that we have before the city council, this is the same slide that you saw before. There are five um, items. Uh, design and recreation of the aquatic and recreation center budget, um, authorization of the city for the city manager to execute the construction contract, authorization to execute the contract for geotechnical testing and inspection, um, approving the project contingency and approving the total project budget. Uh, this budget is also included in the, uh, in the city council's, in the proposed budget for fiscal year 20, 122 that will be formally adopted by the city council 
in on June 22nd uh, of, of this uh, year. And so uh, with that, I will conclude um, alternative actions. Uh, we can, of course, reject all bids and direct staff to re-advertise the project. This, of course, will delay the project and almost certainly result in higher costs. Uh, or we can uh, not award uh, the, con the construction contract um, uh, and, and not uh, move forward uh, with the project. Uh, and so that, that concludes uh, the staff presentation. We are here again to answer any questions. Thank you, City Council. Thank you to our entire team, staff and consultants that uh, have got us to this point. And um, we're, we're looking forward to opening day. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. We'll allow you to get seated, maybe get some water and uh, uh, take a moment. So at this time, members of the public that uh, wish to have comments, now would be the time to please raise your um, virtual hand and then we'll go ahead and call on you and then we're gonna bring it back to the city council for questions on the presentation. Um, I see we have a one speaker and so uh, city clerk, if you'd be so kind. Yes, Paul Wapinski. Good evening, can you hear me? Yes, Paul, whenever you're ready. I, um, in the last couple of months, the uh, cost of building materials and labor skyrocketed. Uh, and I'm just wondering if this budget is is even realistic now with, with the cost. I mean, it's got an 11% contingency, but just lumber itself has gone up 300%. And what's the plan uh, if we do go over the 59 million, um, where does that money come from? Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. Seeing no other speakers. Um, so with that, we will bring it now and leave it at the with the city council. Uh, public comment is concluded. We'll come back to the city council. Uh, and if you could uh, let me know if you have uh, questions of the report, if you could raise the virtual hand or whatever, and I'll, we'll start to call on folks. Vice Mayor Medina. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, if we could, could staff answer that first question? Because uh, that's a really good question. Um, are we gonna take all questions or how are we gonna do this? Well, why don't you go ahead and include it in your question? Okay. And then uh, we'll go with, with your questions if, if we can. Excellent. Um, my first, my first uh, question is for the, this project, um, it includes all the traffic control that's going to be on the site. Is the is the street city park way going to be closed? What's the plan? Um, if, if, if that can be shared at this time. Sure. Uh, the details of that cannot be shared at this time. Uh, there will be a detailed construction schedule. Absolutely, there will be times where city park way is closed. Uh, when we uh, live, uh, have the kickoff meeting with the project and, and get into the detailed construction schedule, uh, they absolutely know the thoroughfare that is City Parkway, uh, and we intend to keep that open for uh, as, as much as possible. And hopefully, when we have to close it, close it intermittently. Great, and and the, the traffic control is included in the contract. Did. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Looking at the at the, at the schedule, I will hear a, a detailed schedule, but it was provided. Uh, that's probably like the number one question that that I've received is when is it going to start and when is it going to be ready. So um, I was wondering if if uh, we could hear a little bit be, um, about that. One of the slides did show seems like a pretty um, aggressive schedule to get it done in. 18 to 20 months, it, look, it looks like from that one slide. Yeah, uh, construction has always been uh, a 22 month construction schedule, uh, but I'll have our architect, uh, Don, uh, address that I see popped on that. Okay. Um, the, um, our construction management includes the community uh, notifications Will there be a site website that people could uh, kind of check in on? And uh, at, for some of the larger construction projects, they, they generally put a, a, a camera up that people can kind of take a look at. Um, is that going to be uh, something that we've thought about? The website and then kind of 
that's probably the primary question of having the web a dedicated website um, that people can kind of check in on how things are going. So, so the answer to both of those is yes. Uh, and I, I think what you're referring to is this, the lovely time lapse, lapse cameras that everyone uh, likes for these big construction projects. And, and yes, we are working uh, to uh, provide a time lapse, lapse camera. Uh, we are we are actually looking at doing that because we uh, have some uh, tech, uh, some people that uh, are, are tech savvy. Uh, we are looking at running that in house. We we did uh, receive a bid for for doing that and uh, decided to not use that outside bid, but but do it in house. And so we're still working out the details. But yes, there is the plan to have uh, that hosted um, and have the time lapse camera. Okay. Um... For the water and sewer work that was identified in the summary, is that this contractor uh, overseeing that as the prime contractor, or is that something for later? Uh, it is included in the Lathrop bid, and so they will be overseeing it. Uh, I honestly um, cannot tell you if that is going to be done by a sub or not right now, but I do know that it's, it is included with their uh, base project bid of $39 million. Excellent. Um, Currently, we, we are uh, being the council is being asked to approve the entire project, which includes that generator, that backup generator. Um, maybe I, I, I'm not recalling uh, the option for for a solar backup. It, is it is it the solar? It's too much up in the air at this time, or is it also that um, the energy requirement? Uh, sizing of that to, to run the facility. Um, just interested in, in um, hearing hearing about that again. Absolutely, uh, Vice Mayor uh, Medina. Lots of meetings and uh, analysis on that, and I am woefully unqualified. So I'm going to turn it over to our architect who led that phase of the project uh, scoping. All right. Um, audio's on? Yeah. Um, so for the photovoltaics, um, and we did actually look at having a battery backup instead of the emergency generator. And unfortunately, right now, the batteries for the solar are not such that they are available or cost effective for us to use as a backup for our building. The building is definitely PV ready. And once photovoltaics are installed, it will definitely offset the energy usage. Um, one of the things we're hoping that's going to happen in the future is that enclosure where the emergency generator is actually would be a great location to site those batteries once they become available. That technology is evolving very quickly. And when we say quickly, so five to 10 years out, they may be able to be replacing that emergency generator with battery backups. Is that your sufficient to answer right um it I guess that, that is going to be the that that is the answer um okay. and um i'm hoping that we find some way to to uh get that 1.3 million um whether it be from low interest loans or, or otherwise as as we move forward um those are my questions uh for now thank you thank you council member hamilton so um, I have a question about uh, bid alternate one, the outdoor pool and deck, which I'm absolutely in, in favor of, as with the other um, the other seven alternates. Um, in the renderings for this, the fencing around it is, looks to look, looks to be waist high, which obviously is not true um, for safety reasons. So is a is a full height fence part of the included price? And I'm assuming yes, but the mo the more important qu the question is have the like what are the aesthetics of that fence because that you know it being at the front of the building could um, have a big impact on the overall aesthetics of the facility so, so Don, will, you, will you answer that and talk about the hillside 
I would love to. And so if you have the PowerPoint available, council member, um, and you go to slide 18, you'll see that the height of the fence on the pool side is 42 inches. And so that is height sufficient to keep people in safely. But because of that great change that I talked about as you go up the site, from the park side, we actually have over six feet of height and it actually gets taller as you go up. It's nicely landscaped, um, but it actually, um, how we've tucked it into the hill and really minimized the aesthetic of having a great big ugly six foot fence as this kind of ugly barrier. We're using that hillside and tucking it in and part of the retaining wall is then in front and then our fence six sets on top of the retaining wall and we've been very carefully how we've detailed that so there's no ledge or anything for anybody to climb up on as well. So I give a lot of credit to our amazing landscape architect to come up with this concept. That's great. That's really, really great. The the uh, the, the fence around our, our uh, current pool is not uh, pleasing and at all. So the, 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 this, that's a great alternative. Thank you. Um, I'll, I'll probably have questions later, but I'm good for now, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Member. Other questions from colleagues? I'm not seeing any other questions from uh, council members on the staff report. Then let's see if there are um, comments from council. Oh, I'm, if go ahead, anyone? The, Mr. Uh, Mayor, the question from the public on the cost, and then um, one other question that I, I I have is: Does this include security cameras, uh, alarms uh, for for the facility for this bid? Security cameras and alarms surveillance is included, yes. We work closely with your police department to come up with the specifications and locations for all the security equipment. And actually, there is actually a uh, satellite police uh, officer's office located in the building as well. And I think the second part was the, uh, circling back on the cost of uh, materials that have increased. So, so Absolutely, the cost of materials have gone up uh, since our bids, uh, well, since we received the bids. We have touch base with the contractor and they are standing by their bid price um, and are um, excited about moving forward with the project. There is a contingency uh, and when you're building a building, absolutely, there, will, there, there, there may be things. Um, but we do feel comfortable in the contingency in the project. Uh, if something happens uh, and uh, the the cost escalates, uh, we will we will have to address that. Um, you know that, that's that's always uh, a risk in in construction. Uh, but we uh, are moving forward. We do have valid uh, uh, bids. We we know that there has been a change in commodity pricing. Um, we've talked to the contractor about that, uh, and we feel that the contingency is sufficient to get through the project. Uh, and it's worth noting that our uh, construction management firm is uh, currently working on uh, other community related projects in the area. And so uh, it, it is navigating uh, those issues, absolutely. Okay. Uh, now, uh, since questions are concluded, uh, comments from council. Council Member Mason. Yeah, I actually have questions. I just didn't get to my hand raising in time. Okay. Um, so um, I'll just direct them as I go through them. Um, the first one is, um, in the we previously talked about the potential of making the pool wider. I think this is something I've brought up for at least a year and a half um, because we've had community members want a pool that's going to ensure that there's ability to have like I guess water polo um, competitions is one of the requests I've had um, from a number of residents actually. Uh, and then I had another resident say that the size of the pool is not, you know, like your average pool for a, some kind of another tournament. Being, I'm not a swimmer myself, but being that I have brought it up to the city manager on um, multiple, multiple occasions and that we're being asked to um, approve the design tonight, what is the possibility of changing that in the future as we go through this? Uh, absolutely, uh, Council Member Mason, uh, you have mentioned that and uh, the design of the pool was a, a subject of um, 
much debate, uh, much cost cutting, uh, and uh, uh, final decisions when we develop uh, the construction documents. So uh, what is currently uh, designed in the pool is a year-round indoor six-lane pool with a mirrored, uh, nearly mirrored six-lane outdoor pool, as well as a zero-depth uh, uh, pool outside that with a spray feature um, for, for, for young kids. And that zero-depth uh, does about, um, uh, it is a part of the ADA access as well as um, uh, child safety in the pool. The, the conversation is around potentially making the pool larger uh, are really twofold. It's one going from six lanes outdoor to eight lanes outdoor, um, potentially for collegiate meets. Uh, and additionally, having additional depth for things like water polo uh, tournaments. Should the city decide to do one or both of those, there is a process that we could do uh, with a change order that will certainly have a cost uh, implication. Uh, and we can do that after the award of the contract and have those conversations. I think connected to both of those conversations is a uh, in-depth uh, analysis and understanding on uh, the business plan and operational model for uh, the pool as well as um, competing uses for the pool and other costs, because there's a cost of sort of adding more water and adding more depth, but then there are other costs of the project that, 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 that escalate as you do change orders. So we can absolutely have that conversation. Uh, I think staff has uh, done some initial analysis with the architect on that point to uh, potentially expand the outdoor pool. Um, I think council and the public will remember that there was a point in this project where uh, we didn't think we would be able to afford it out. Uh, and we made a number of um, strategic decisions to, to, to have a financially viable project. Uh, but, you know, we, 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 we can absolutely, after this phase, uh, continue to have those conversations uh, about a potential change order. Uh, but it, it should really be informed on uh, the potential users for that expansion what revenue that uh, would generate, and what other um, uh, users that may push out by having uh, that expanded use. And so uh, what, what the pool is currently designed for is not collegiate meets, which is really what you need. I understand you need those eight lanes for. Um, but, you know, I, can, I, I should actually pause right now because I'm, I'm getting past my depth of pool knowledge and um, turn it over to the, our community services director for any closing comments on this. But just to suffice to say, it's, it's not a forestall thing. We can continue to have those conversations at the change order. And, and I would just echo that it does go hand in hand with the implementation and how we will balance the use of the facility, the pools against revenue models and the different revenue centers within the facility. So um, as we move forward, the, the decision will be concurrent with, um, I think, the business operations of that particular part of the facility. Okay, great. Yeah, I just I just wanted to be clear that it's not just coming up now out of nowhere. So I hope that this conversation has already started, which it sounds like it has. And I think it's something that we should consider because once it's built, it's going to be a lot harder to make those changes later and a lot more expensive as well. Um, so do we, uh, just so that uh, before I leave that topic, is that something that we would, um, when we vote on this, we would say this is something we want to ensure that is continu continues to be considered or we just wait for um, some kind of a report back on that topic? You know, I say it's already on staff's work program and we will schedule that uh, a study session with the city council about uh, that at a later date. Uh, you know, I, I think probably in the August, September timeframe would be sufficient for that. And that's what we've talked about. Uh, so getting uh, through the contract award and the permitting with the facility as designed is actually really critical and important. And then talking about potential change orders uh, subsequent to that. Okay. Okay. Um, I just say it because I, I believe it would be a very expensive change order. So um, I had a question about bleachers. How, how many people will be able to actually sit inside that indoor pool space? Don, will you take that? 
Um, so in the indoor pool space, we've actually have room for two tilt up roll bleachers, which are three high um, and they can fit over there next to the glazing that opens up out to the grass area or where the potential pool alternate could locate. Um, additionally, the party rooms are also used for viewing spaces for parents for swim lessons and things like that. And then also the pool lobby looks right into the natatorium as well. Um, the concept if there was pool uh, school high school meets there was that the roll up door could open up and the uh, teams could set up their camps out on the uh, lawn area outside that roll up deck. And so even if that outdoor pool didn't come along, the six lanes inside are set up with the timing equipment as well as the outdoor lanes as well for more like high school meets that had been discussed um, and locations for where the team meets would set as well. So, so um, that the tilt up roll bleachers about how many people would that be? I, I'm sorry, I don't know. That's okay. I think it's 18 inches, six feet. Uh, let me just do probably about 30 to 40 on the bleachers and then additional deck space if needed. But for bleacher seating, that's what could be accommodated there on the inside. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, this question is probably for, I would say, the contractor. If the contractor is available. Well, why don't we ask the, the, the question and then we'll see who's best or if it's Don or. Okay, so I have a, um, a couple of questions. Um, the first one is around the supplies. Um, what is the plan to ensure that your um, supplies are cleaned every night, that we leave the area tidy? Um, and uh, how would you respond to any resident concerns that are raised? I think that question is best for our construction manager, uh, George. Uh, uh, so, Melissa, I don't see George uh, standing in the room. Can you bring him in the room, please? He's, a, he's an attendee. Thank you. And if there is a representative from the uh, construction firm, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, and, and come in the room. And he's been brought in. You're on mute. Mr. Sandin, you're muted. I thought I, I thought I unmuted myself. I apologize. Good evening. Okay. Thank you. I did, I did hear your question. So uh, the answer is it, we strive to work with the contractor to keep the facility neat and tidy, basically, not only the interior, but the exterior, which mostly affects all of the constituents and everyone, pedestrians that pass by, as well as the street. In uh, all of the cases where we have materials uh, such as concrete um, that would create additional debris on the streets and everything. We um, require that they sweep the streets with uh, mechanical sweepers. And we also literally wash the tires of the trucks that leave the facility uh, to prevent any um, leftovers from concrete or other dust or sand, uh, et cetera to go into the into the streets. We also wet uh, continuously all of the soils, uh, especially we have, as you know well, a very windy area. So we continuously wet the area so the dust is, is not flying all over the neighborhood. Right, thank you. And what about um, any plan for um, residents who may express complaints um, about noise or about dirt or anything that comes with the construction. Um, what's been your experience with that in the past and how have you handled it? Well, as the city manager uh, mentioned earlier, um, we were 
actually building a, a nearby community center for the city of Burlingame. Mm -hmm. And uh, we plan to um, do exactly the same thing, a replica of, of what we are doing for the city of Burlingame, which is basically having a helpline that is available to the public, not only via the city website, but also posted uh, on the fences of the construction site. That helpline can be accessed by anyone, neighbors, anyone that has a concern, a complaint, uh, or a question. And I regularly check those uh, messages and answer them directly. Uh, provide uh, assurances that the constituents are being heard. And uh, if it's anything that can be mitigated immediately, I, I immediately act up, up upon it, whether it is by the general contractor or working along with the city, uh, if it's outside my jurisdiction. Thank you. Um, the next one is um, just, and maybe the last one for you, um, Mr. Sennon, and it's around just the local hiring. Will will there be any plan if positions or subcontracting is available to attempt at least to hire locally uh, as much as possible? Well, um, the contractor already submitted a very comprehensive list of contractors that are all union contractors. Within those, uh, there would be some apprentice uh, level, entry level uh, positions, and we'll coordinate with the contractor if they have the capability of bringing some local folks and uh, train them or uh, make them learn uh, certain aspects of, of construction that they might be interested in. There's, there's a large variety of, of fields where people can participate. So we'll work with them. That would be um, wonderful. Thank you. Um, my next question is for, let me see, um, for our city manager. Um, and that's around the, what are the city controls? It looks like from the staff report that the construction manager is going to handle uh, quite a bit of the relationship with the contractor. And so I'm wondering what is the city's role going to be? Um, where are the checks and balances on uh, the construction manager as well as the contractor? Uh, so there will be a uh, city staff person uh, assigned to the to oversee Griffin structures and their contract, uh, as well as uh, there is the client department, uh, the community services director. And so uh, we we have actually transitioned our management of this project uh, many different times, uh, depending on the phases. And as we we enter the construction phase, this really becomes more of a public works project. Whereas before, when we were in design, it was really led by the client department. Um, and so the structure contract is. Okay, thank you. I apologize. Go ahead. The structure's contract is with, uh, it, it's held within our public works department, and it will be our public works director uh, that is chiefly responsible for that. Uh, at, at, at this moment, uh, our interim uh, public works director, Awan Ritchie, who's also our city engineer, uh, uh, will will have oversight of the grip structures contract. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm curious to know why the contingency is 11 percent and not the what I believe is the typical five to 10 percent. Sure. So, so that 11% is the uh, construction contingency only. Uh, there's actually in the sort of detailed cost model, there's contingencies in every line item. Um, and so the overall remaining contingency is, is, is just over um, $5, $5 million. Uh, roughly 10% uh, is where we uh, want it to land uh, initially. But realizing the uh, additional risks uh, with uh, everything that's going on now with, with material pricing, as well as just uh, the, the, the busyness of uh, construction, uh, we thought it was uh, prudent to increase it uh, to 11. Uh, and there, there's honestly no magic. And I think 
just 11 point something. Um, the, uh, we wanted to make sure that we at least had uh, a 10% contingency. Uh, and then when we went through the final budget analysis, uh, there were some uh, additional bonds that we, uh, uh, when you do the final math, it's 11 point four, I believe, percent. So, so is, um, is there anything wrong with the uh, city requesting a 10% contingency and then, and this is probably a question for our city attorney, but requesting a 10% contingency and anything over 10% has to come back to the council for approval? It's important to note that any use of the contingency for, for construction has to come back to the city council. Uh, and so your financial appropriation is just that. It's appropriating the money to the project uh, but what you're authorizing your, uh, the city manager to sign is, a, uh, is the contract for Griffin for $43,031,000. Uh, $43, and so any change order uh, that may be needed over that is going to have to come to the city council for approval. Okay, great. That's comforting. Um, let's see. I think. I, I did have a question just as when I look at um, the current, the state of, you know, reopening and I know that the contractor, I did go to your website and I, I you know, I heard what you just said about Burlingame. Um, I'm curious to know though, given where, where we are with COVID, if you are up to date on your existing contracts um, to make sure that that doesn't then impact the, this contract that we, that we have before us tonight. So council member Mason, uh, I do not believe that there is a representative from Lathrop Construction uh, here tonight, but there is uh, a representative from Griffin Structures, our construction manager that is here tonight. Uh, and so George, I know you're um, um, working on a number of projects and you can talk about Berlin Game. Um, and so George, can I toss that question to you? Sure, can, can I? Um get that question repeated please yeah so the question was regarding lathrop construction um sure. and whether given where we are with covid and that a lot is reopening people are going back to work uh, are there any projects that you're behind on now that may impact this particular construction project start date no as, as a matter of fact uh, we as i mentioned earlier i'm currently working on the community center for the city of burlingame which incidentally and appropriately is also being designed by Group 4 Architects. Um, that project is on schedule as actually I can say a little bit ahead of schedule in spite of all of the problems that have been created by, by the COVID outbreak. Um, so I don't foresee any conditions that, that would impede the proper flow of construction once the notification to proceed is issued uh, for that. So. Okay. And um, so city manager, did you just say nobody's here from Lathrop? George, no, the name to look for. Uh, I, I we have someone raising, raising their hand. Um, oh. Within the public, if <coughs> the city clerk can see that. We're bringing them into the room. Uh, I brought in. You're brought in. Okay. Um, I guess my next question is just is a, a request that, um, similar to what we've had with COVID, given that you know there's a vested interest, I think, by everybody to have this uh, project done on time and within budget. I would like to request a monthly progress report. Um, to the council. It doesn't have to be a long presentation. It could be a five to 10 minute presentation, just stating that, um, you know, we are on track to finish on time. We're on budget to finish on time. Um, if there's any, um, you know, hiccups that come up that we, that it be reported at that time and that the contractor later up be available for any questions that may arise from the public. Um, so it's a large contract for our city, and I think it's really important that we're as transparent as possible uh, about the progress of the project and that we are all accountable because all of this money that's being used is really, um, I think that we all have a responsibility to the public to ensure that it's being used, uh, um, you know, appropriately and within our timeline set is 
is that um, any any on that or questions on that from the city manager? And to, before you answer, can you also see uh, explain how that's tying into what you saw in the PowerPoint presentation about weekly and monthly reports? Because that was in there, and maybe that needs just to be uh, clarified so we understand. Uh, so um, absolutely, there are already envisioned monthly reports to the city council. Uh, uh, council Member Mason, what I believe I also hear you 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 requesting is a standing item at one of our two regular city council meetings for a project update and also to have a representative from the construction firm present to answer questions uh, on that item from any members of the public. Um, I, I, you know, why don't I first uh, allow the, the representative from the um, uh, contractor to answer that uh, question. Um, uh, but it, it is an, an atypical request and something that was not included in the bid. Rick? Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Rick Martellero. I'm uh, president of Lathrop Construction. And um, thank you for having me. Um, it's been interesting listening. And, and uh, as, as stated, we've, we're uh, very engaged and involved in the project. We have been for some time and looking forward to uh, an approval. Um, Council member uh, Mason, uh, we, we can be available. Um, we interact um, quite frequently on a lot of our projects with community neighborhoods. We know that when we come in, we're making a lot of dirt and noise. We also appreciate the fact that uh, the public in particular has supported this project. And um, and so we're very sensitive to that. So as needed and in coordination with George and, and, the, and the city, um, we can be available. Um, we like doing that. We like communicating well. Um, uh, we, we do sometimes uh, build schools right in the middle of of the homes and, and as a result of some of the tactics that we implement and trying to be good neighbors and, and recognizing that we're infringing on on them for a couple of years um, they actually turn out being friendly and, and watching the projects for us and so but it's earned it's not something that is expected and uh, we try to keep them informed and we would be working closely with griffin and and uh, the city and, and keeping them informed as what's going on and because we know it's a very important project for you guys. Okay, great. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you guys. I'm almost done. Um, I guess just in regards to the contract, um, and I do believe this is um, maybe a city attorney question, but two questions. Uh, one is in regards to materials, if there's any theft of materials, just uh, who the responsible party is. Um, and then the second part of the question is um, in regards to uh, any um, going over going over the contracted um, time what the punitive measures are on the contractor uh, for every day that goes past the deadline. City manager. Sure, I'll talk to the uh, punitive uh, uh, measures to the city attorney, uh, Mark Saffarano. But uh, I raised my hand because I just, I, I, wanna, <laughs> I wanna end this with appropriate expectations. And so um, there, there was a quest, there was a request from council member Mason to have the contractor present um, at one of our monthly city council meetings. And, you know, I've, I've been doing this for a while and I know the cost to, to have uh, uh, people attend our council meetings. Uh, and so if, if I can, I just want to talk to the contractor because I don't want that to be uh, in, the, in the, the final analysis, a change order for the cost to attend one council meeting a, a month and have the contractor sitting through our uh, public comment uh, for an item when they may or may not be asked a question. And so uh, just re respectfully, I understand the request, but let us uh, work with the contractor, work with the uh, project manager to identify an appropriate uh, reporting structure to the city council or report out to the city council uh, that does not involve um, additional costs uh, or unnecessary additional costs to the project. Uh, uh, city Attorney, Toronto. 
Yeah, and just to be clear, um, we're approving a, con a contract essentially, right? And so that contract has been or is being uh, negotiated. And I, I don't think that for a $43 million contract, there should be an extra cost to be present to report out to the public for a 22 month period. Um, right. So I do wanna just be very clear about that. Absolutely, Our, the contract template though was attached to the bid. Um, and um, with these processes, anything that's additional typically comes with additional costs. I just don't wanna leave this conversation with an expectation uh, that that's going to occur when we haven't had uh, those conversations on uh, will that be pro bono or will that uh, be at an added cost and then we can make that value decision on what's the appropriate way to keep the city council informed. Uh, city attorney. So uh, council member Mason, I don't have the all of the contract documents immediately in front of me, so I can't answer that question right now. It's possible that the folks at Griffin uh, might know the answer to that question, um, having looked through the contract perhaps more recently than I have, or they may have it up on their screen. If not, uh, we can provide that answer for you a at a later time. Okay. Yes, go ahead, George. Um, we provide as part of our integrated services, monthly reports that are fully comprehensive, including cost estimates, the advance and of the project. I worked uh, with the contractor, with the superintendent and the project manager in creating those reports. They include photographs. They include all of the financial um, progress of the project. So, and they are distributed uh, uh, in a very timely uh, way. So they are, directed to whoever is going to be, if it's the director of public works, who in turn will disseminate to all of you council members and anyone else that has stake on the project. Mr. Mayor, it appears that John Hughes from Griffin has also raised his hand. He may have some information regarding the last question. Mr. Hughes, did you want to add anything? You're muted. Yes, John. I, w I just wanted to add, I wanted to answer uh, council members uh, Medina uh, Mason's question. Currently, the contract calls for $5,000 per day of liquidated damages should the contractor fail to meet the schedule. Okay, great. Thank you. That's, that is what I was looking for. Um, and then I think the last, just really the last question is around the communication from the city. Um, what, what is the communication plan at this time for the surrounding community um, after tonight's meeting to notify them that a contract has been entered into, the timeline of construction, and about this helpline that uh, is being set up for any residents who have questions? Uh, so uh, to be clear, after tonight, um, we will not immediately enter into contract. Uh, we, we do have a deadline within June to enter into contract. Uh, we, we, will, we will meet that deadline. The action tonight is authorized the city manager uh, to do that. And then we have, uh, again, the meeting with the foundation for the final approval of, of the $50 million grant that will be next Tuesday. Um, the communications to the neighborhood, there will absolutely be a mailing to the neighborhood prior to the start of construction. Uh, as um, the slide uh, uh, where we talked about the duties of Griffin Structure, our construction manager, their direct contact information will be there um, for a direct person for the city's con um, um, construction manager, as well as a representative from the construction firm. Uh, and then uh, as we talked about within the scope of the work that Griffin will do, it will be that regular interface uh, to address any uh, concerns that, um, that that may come up during construction from the community. They are the individuals that we're hiring to, to, to manage that and work directly with the contractor to resolve those issues as soon as they come up. So frankly, council doesn't get calls, right? When there's a issue with a construction contract, uh, it's, there, will be a, there will be signs posted at the job site. There's a, if there's an issue, contact this person, 
Uh, and uh, the expectation uh, certainly is that bills will, uh, the, the vast majority of them will be resolved and, and never reach the city council or the city manager, uh, which is um, uh, commonplace and, and why we, 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 we brought on Griffin Structures. Griffin Structures then will be managing that contract to see that that occurs. Great, thank you. And um, yeah, I think as far as just a comment, since we're going into comments, um, you know, the requests that I've made about these public um, reporting uh, or the public reporting as a monthly request, it, it's not that it's, uh, you know, to be heard before the council. I think if we wanted that, we could just have a, a private meeting. It's really that this is a project that the city is very excited about. Um, and like many government uh, agencies, there's always this feeling of we're going to, you know, it's going to take too long or it's going to be delayed. And I think it's really important that these conversations be had in public and that the contractor, the city, all of our consultants are all being held accountable together because at the end of the day, if we're not working together, this project's not going to get done. Um, and I, I really want to uh, compliment Don, who has been kind of the face of this um, since the beginning. I remember seeing you at some of the original meetings. Um, I think you've just done an excellent job facilitating these meetings, facilitating and coordinating a lot of different parties. Um, and uh, I, I really look forward to continuing to hear about the project and seeing it move forward. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Other um, comments from council? Uh, Vice, um, I apologize. <laughs> Councilmember Salazar. Sorry, Mr. Weissner. Thank you. So uh, definitely a great project and a long time coming. Uh, we've been waiting a long time for this. And um, my, my concern, I, I, I have concerns and they're mostly uh, around the budget. I mean, this this one project is, is bigger than our general fund. Um, and um, and I know we, we've we've had familiarity with the numbers and the numbers have, have gone up, they've come down. It's been like a roller coaster as, as we go through the process. And in the end, it's um, it's come into something that's doable. Um, but um, the, the one uh, question I had, and I know at one time we had talked about when the, when the when the price tag was a lot bigger, we talked about uh, ha issuing a bond to make up the difference. And where I'm looking at where the money's coming from right now and conversations that we've had as a council around protecting specific funds, um, I'm wondering if that's still an option uh, for the city's contribution to, to this project. Um, and, and, you know, specifically, I'm talking about, you know, we're, we're, we're taking money out of streets, we're taking it out of sewer, we're taking it out of water. I understand that those are components of this, but up, up until you know, we decided we were pulling the trigger on this. There were projects that were counting on those dollars. Um, the, the entire um, benefit from Bay Hill um, is going into this, but there are um, other projects out there that have been waiting for money. Um, you know, and I'm looking at things that are in our, in our capital plan. Uh, we have streetlights that are rusting away, uh, RO circuits that need to be addressed and no available funding for those. And so when you know we look at, uh, at building this wonderful project, I, I agree that we we need to find money where where it um, where it can be. But I, I I feel that it may be in some cases coming at the expense of other critical infrastructure needs. And so that that's where where I struggle not with the project itself, but with where we're pulling funds from. And then hearing. Um, Hearing tonight, there are already discussions about change orders. Um, that that is concerning to me because um, you know it, it's already a hard pill to swallow. Uh, that you know, in, in these economic times, um, you know we're we're going to expend these amount of funds, uh, but then the, that could potentially grow. That's uh, definitely a concern to me. Um, you know, five to $10 million may seem small in comparison to the project, but during the last election cycle, I spent most of my time explaining to the public why the city had an $8 million shortfall. Uh, so it's, it's not completely insignificant to say that it's, it's you know, it, it may be a bargain for this project, but it's not an insignificant amount of money uh, that's coming out of other projects. And so I would, um, uh, suggest that we potentially still look at doing uh, a bond to do this. That bond could be paid back uh, 
still tied to the department uh, funds coming from that department to pay it back uh, and sort of keeping things isolated where they belong. Um, and uh, and, that, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I, I, I do intend to, to support the project and issuing the contract. I wanna see this move forward. Uh, I just wanna make sure that we're uh, eyes wide open and not so um, fascinated by this uh, this amazing project that we forget that we we are responsible for a lot more than just this. Okay, council member, um, city manager, did you have some you wanted to say or? Sure. Um, let me sort of uh, step through a number of uh, questions there. I know there were a number of statements that I, uh, I want to I, I want to address, but I think there were a number of questions there. Uh, but first, uh, Council Member Salazar mentioned that uh, this is the uh, entire community benefit from YouTube. I just want to clarify, I know that the Council Member knows this, but I want to clarify for the members in the public. It is the community benefit payment, the $4.5 million, from the current YouTube project that is under construction. That is not connected to the other YouTube campus expansion that we have been talking about, which is the Bay Hill specific plan. That has a separate community benefit package, and that will be going before the, uh, the city the, the city council later this year. And so that has a um, more significant community benefit package that's uh, um, uh, attached to it. With regard to uh, utilizing uh, other funds and uh, the city's challenges, absolutely. Uh, the, the city of San Bruno, uh, uh, has had fiscal challenges uh, for, for several decades. Uh, and the current facilities that we're replacing uh, is, uh, were built in the 50s. Uh, and, and when we did the seismic analysis on the current recreation uh, facility, uh, it was not salvageable and there are significant seismic issues uh, with that facility. Uh, and so in the $60 million project budget, 50 million of that is coming from the community foundation. And so there, that leads to the $10 million from various city funds. Of that 10 million, 5 million is contingency. Um, and so, with regard to the other question, which is, well, can we bond for that additional cost above uh, the, the, the $50 million grant from the foundation? Uh, we can continue to look at that. Uh, what we know from the budget that is before you is as we come out of COVID-19, the ability for excess revenue to pay the debt service is not necessarily there. When we were looking at a potentially $8 million bond uh, to cover a $68 million project, we're potentially gonna have to look at using Measure G, at least in the short term, to pay that annual debt service. And so should the city council want to uh, direct staff to continue to look at bond financing, we can certainly do that. But given where our budget is today, paying that debt service will either, I think, really mean one or two things in the short term, which is we, we either cut operations to have revenue to pay that debt service, or we utilize Measure G to pay that debt service in the short term. Um, with regard uh, to the use of, 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 of other funds, Certainly water and sewer uh, have fund balances that can sustain the, the, uh, uh, the, the project uh, budget that is uh, aligned to those. We did have a question from council member um, Medina that, that came in just before the meeting on what are all of the fund balances uh, of the funds that are in the project budget. I did just receive the answer to that. Uh, we can talk about that, um, uh, um, uh, and I can, I can pull that up if, if council would like to know all those fund balances. What I would say is the project budget that you have before you is also included in the proposed budget. So it's, it's an, included in all of the proposed CIP projects and final fund balance al allocations, uh, because really the only thing that's changed about the budget in the last six months is that it's, Four point uh, seven point four billion dollars less, and we reduced the uh, parking loo money from three million down to one point seven. 
Uh, and so we are able to fund this project with the resources that we have uh, uh, within our uh, control right now, uh, with that receipt of the $50 million uh, from the Community Foundation. And again, of the 10 million that's coming from city funds, 5 million of that is contingency. And so um, those are the, the, the true city funds that are being brought to bear on replacing these, these two very uh, aging facilities uh, that, that, that uh, we're here because of the community listening campaign to replace them. Uh, Council Member Salazar. Uh, thank you. And, and so just to continue, yeah, uh, it, it is true that there will be more money coming from the Bay Hill project, but uh, what we know that uh, has, has been committed, what we can actually, what's ours to spend right now is, uh, is this that we're looking at. So, um, you know, I've been bit before by uh, trying to count my chickens before they all hatch. So uh, <laughs> the, other, um, the other thing um, I wanted to also mention, uh, just in terms of the contingency costs, um, I, I believe in response to Council Member Mason's question, it was stated that all uh, contingency expenses come back to Council. But unless I'm completely wrong, that has not been my experience. And almost every construction project that I've seen has used at least some portion of its contingency, and it has never come back to the Council for approval. I know change orders will come back to us, and, and that's appropriate. But um, I don't believe I've ever seen anything come back and ask us, uh, do we approve the contingency? Once it's approved, it normally gets used as needed. And when you're sticking shovels in the ground, you're always going to uncover something and it's probably going to get used. So to say, yeah, it's only it's only five million. The five million is only contingency. Um, I'm not going to count on that not getting spent. And, um, you know, I, I think Council Member Mason made some really valid points around um, what what the optics are around this going forward. Uh, I was very much in favor of having the um, the committee, the subcommittee that's existed. I've, I've only been on it now uh, for this year. And I think we had two meetings and it really didn't meet the level of expectation that I had around what would be presented and what that group would be um, involved in. And uh, I know the design moved a little slower, but as we start getting into the construction and, and the dollars start getting spent, I, I really feel we need um, the level of oversight. Um, and we're going to be counting on our construction manager to, to bring us the reports. Uh, we saw the same thing happen with the Glenview uh, restitution, uh, the rebuilt reconstruction project, uh, excuse me, the reconstruction project. Uh, we did get um, regular updates, but even then, uh, we far exceeded the budget. There were a lot of change orders that came in. And in the end, I feel that we, we failed the neighborhood in providing everything that we had committed to. So uh, I, uh, will, <laughs> I don't want to see that happen again, if we can at all help it. So those are my comments. Thank you, council member. Um, and for myself, um, it's important to me too that there is that that communication and that's why it's already placed in their weekly and monthly reports so i don't want to duplicate efforts i just want to have it um so that it's it's uh, available to folks so you know it could be um um uh, part of the packet or part of the agenda so it's always online so it is always available i also my expectation would be that you know we don't want to wait a month to get news we want any any concerns that residents or neighbors have to be addressed quickly and uh, expeditiously. And so uh, it could be followed up as to, you know, kind of a, a highlight of what what questions have, have, have risen, what concerns might they have. And we could be updated on that too. But I do want to see that something comes back. I don't know if it has to be, and, and city manager, I appreciate you saying, setting the expectation so that it's not, uh, to, to think automatic. Um, but there are ways, and I don't want to duplicate, we're going to get monthly and weekly reports or however it's being facilitated. I think that's what we need to know. What is the process going to be? Where is it going to be available? How will it be available? How can interested people who really have a love and a passion and it's in their backyard and it's going to be for their community, where can they go? Make, let's make it simple. Let's make it easy. Let's make it user friendly. Um, and, and I'm also with uh, the Council Member Salazar in the sense of my understanding too is 
once we release the contract because of its completion, then we will see the change orders within the document, which uh, comes back to council. Uh, there are some elements, and that's where we'll start to see some of those things that have happened. Some are unforeseeable, right? You start to um, you start to dig down, and all of a sudden, wow, that wasn't listed. That wasn't there. There's no record of it. Um, God knows this city has uh, has uh, experienced that uh, almost 11 years ago. So um, anyway, I you know I am obviously in favor of the project. And, and I think a community is is uh, impatient and been waiting. And I, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop going so that we can try to get to the vice mayor, uh, the um, city manager, and then we'll see if there's any action from council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, I wanted to thank the staff and 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 all of our uh, consultants working on this um, this project. Uh, long time coming it's as councilman salazar said this one project is bigger than our general fund this project is bigger than anything that we've done um, in many many years we rebuilt a neighborhood for 50 million or so right but this is one single project um so i, I want to speak in support of of having a monthly update uh, something short, uh, a standing, uh, it could be the first meeting of the month or it could be the last meeting of the month, doesn't matter. Um, this project is so important um, that we that we get an update and timely updates. And so monthly, I think is reasonable, you know, five minutes or less. If it needs to be more than that, then then um, then hopefully, uh, hopefully it won't. Hopefully everything's going to go smooth. But um, in construction, there's always something that comes up. Um, one other thing as I was hearing the other questions is for our, for Griffin doing the construction management, it would be uh, great if they maintained a log of, of the complaints that they are issues that they are dealing with. It'd be good to see what those are. It doesn't have to come, uh, preferable not to come to the council every single time there's an issue, but the log, uh, would be, uh, great if they were able to share that uh, with staff and with the council to see what are the issues over there. Um, so I am in support of this. Um, as for the funding and potential bonding, I, I think that as we move forward, I think we're, we have uh, a capable city manager that will be able to identify potential funds as they come, up, come about. And uh, we'll be talking with the San Bruno Community Foundation here, approving their budget here, um, if that's not tomorrow, I think, uh, from the agenda I received. I, but, um, and, and uh, that, for the city manager, that it, that it could be an option of asking um, the, the San Bruno Community Foundation to, to, to bring on additional funding if, it, if it's needed. Um, the 50 million was decided. That number was from from eight years ago, before we even had prices on this. So um, I, I look forward to uh, voting and approving this, and uh, and uh, I think we're ready to go. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. I'm sorry, Councilmember Hamilton. No problem. So I'll I'll be fast because I know we're I know we're um, running out of time. Um, it, it, because just because I didn't uh, say any comments earlier, I, I am also very much in favor of this and look forward to voting to adopt this resolution tonight. Um, I am also in favor of, of, of regular updates. I, I, I do hear and have the same concerns about, um, you know, having, you know, paying to have staff uh, or, or, the, or representatives from the construction company sit through our meetings. Um, but we can be creative with that. There's no, absolutely no reason that that one monthly update, you know, at one of our meetings can't be item number three right after the pledge um, to get right to it, get it, get it done, get it over with, and then we get into our regular business. So we have, we have all, we have flexibility in how we set up our meetings to mitigate that. So um, I just wanted to, to share my, um, my support for the whole project and, and my uh, 
support report for the idea of having those regular updates. Uh, yeah, and I think just to uh, thank you, Council Member, uh, City Managers already said, please allow me the opportunity. He's heard all of us, I think, in one way or another, uh, to talk, work, and then let us know. So I think he knows that, but uh, I do want to give him that opportunity that he's already asked us. So again, they're getting reports as well. Let's not duplicate efforts. Let's streamline the process. Um, all right, council members, I appreciate it. Staff, thank you. Um, and to all uh, of our guests that are here that have been working with us on this uh, to get to this phase. Um, council member Salazar, any uh, afternoons? Uh, I said, go ahead. Yes, we, we have a, a, a resolution in front of us. I was uh, going to make the motion to introduce the resolution if it's appropriate. I saw your, your mic go on, so that's why I said, let, let, go ahead, sir. Okay. So with that, then I will introduce the resolution approving the design of the center, authorizing the city manager to execute the construction contract with Lathrop, approving a construction contingency of 4.6 million, authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement with Nino and Moore for the geotechnical uh, portion, and approving a total project budget not to exceed. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, let's see where it was. Total project budget um, of uh, fifty nine million nine hundred and eighty thousand two hundred and twenty eight dollars. Thank you for reading that for the record. Is there? Okay. Wow. All right, uh, <laughs> Mr. Vice Mayor, roll call, please. The City Clerk. Councilmember Hamilton. Aye. Councilmember Mason. Aye. Councilmember Salazar. Aye. Vice Mayor Marty Medina. Aye. Mayor Rico Medina. Hi. Once again, thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Uh, thank you, staff. Thank you to all uh, all the others, uh, George, John, Don. Um, thank you all, uh, Rick, for, for being here. Um, with that said, uh, we are going to adjourn to the next regular city council meeting, um, which I will see you in about uh, several minutes.